Hey guys, we are back for another SME clinic and this time we're not going to give you solutions. We want to share an amazing story of hope. It's an initiative that came in response to COVID-19 and it's something that just shows how the world of going viral is phenomenal and just the hearts of South Africans and what's been done. So it's also my first time to have two interviewees, which way to look here. So I welcome Brent from 3D PSA and he's going to tell you much more about what that is. And many of you might have already seen Hugo Durant, who's a CPO for AfriMac, but in his personal capacity involved with search and rescue ORU organization. Now, one of the things that came out of COVID-19 is suddenly this need for masks. And I'm sure you're seeing great shui shui things and, and that's all thank you for us at home. But what about our frontline workers? Brent, welcome. I don't want to steal your thunder. Please tell us about this amazing initiative and how those at home have come in a bit of a crowdsourcing element to meet the needs of uh, shields and to protect our frontline workers. Thanks. Thanks so much, Debbie. And it's, yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of, I was nominated the spoke, to be the spokesperson for this, um, this movement. So this is me. Um, my name's Brent, Brent Alexander. Um, it's a lot more than me in, 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 the, in, the, in the reality of things. We have a, between three and 400 uh, crowdsourced um, 3D printers for our, for our movement. Our movement at the moment is called 3D PSA, which is 3D Printing SA. And we identified a need. Um, it was about a month ago. We've been going for about four weeks to print these um, 3D printed face shields. This will take an A4 transparency and just an, an elastic band as a sort of first line defense for our, our current uh, frontline workers, this being emergency medical services, ambulance services, COVID-19 task forces, um, government hospitals, government clinics, um, basically whoever really would need assistance in PPE protection. Um, we've, already, we've already seen um, in the news that PPE is, is, is generally in lack at the moment um, across South Africa. So we stepped up um, with the sort of the guidance of a gentleman by the name of Kevin Klempen and a Netcare EMS, who sort of was the initiator of, of, of this, uh, um, this movement. And from then a number of movements have sprouted up and, and carried on and started to produce um, face shields and face masks, that kind of thing. But we as 3D PSA, we took it on to, to produce these. And we're just under the 10,000 marks so far in terms of, of how many of these we've, we've printed. Half of those have already been deployed into the fields. And at the moment we're in Gauteng and in Western Cape. And we've just, yeah, for the last week to set up the, the Western Cape side, side of things. We have a full um, provincial logistics team, thanks to our, our, our great friends at, at Oru. Um, we've got Hugo, Hugo here with us. They've been insisting on us in collecting the shields from each 3D printer. Bearing in mind, this is a crowdsourced 3D printing farm. Everyone is at their own individual premises printing these shields. So Oru stepped in to assist us in collecting each, um, each one's shields. Um, we have a form that someone fit, uh, fills out once they've reached, reached a certain threshold, they can submit for collection. Um, our amazing team at, at Oru will, will head out. Um, we usually do this on weekends, um, once a weekend, head out and go and collect all those shields. It's then brought to a sanitization and distribution center so we can sanitize them. Oru has uh, set up six of those around Gauteng. We're also involved with a charity in Western Cape called Beating Heart. Their sanitization distribution center is set up in Cape Town with um, Oru in the background um, in terms of support. So it's been a a monumental four weeks setting setting this thing up. It started with about 10 of us on a Discord server. Discord servers are, um, um, if your kids play games, they'll know exactly what Discord is. It's a okay. gaming sort of chats chat, but it works very well to sort of unify people, give them roles and give them channels they can sort of look after. Okay. And it's, it's grown from strength to strength. We're about 600, just over 600 members on the Discord server with about yeah. 250 to 300 active printers um, on, on the server as well. Phenomenal. So guys, very key to note, this is all sponsored. This is all voluntary. We'll get into some of the things that is going to be needed for phase two. I mean, to think within four weeks, you have distributed 10,000 masks. That is no small feat. And a big thank you goes out from, from our communities to what you are doing. And, and Hugo, to the Oru side, I mean, interesting enough, I did another interview this morning on supply chain, which is kind of our business, really. And it's all good and well to have product, but if we can't get it out there quick enough and fast enough, that's, that's a big thing. 
you go a little bit on on Oru's uh, partnership on this and just what you're finding at the moment to support the distribution? Hi Debbie, thanks for having me back again. Yes, uh, we got approached by the guys to see if um, we can speed up the process of collecting the shields as there was one individual trying to drive throughout Gauteng and collect all the shields and then distribute them. Uh, we got together, um, got our permits in place, got our paperwork in place on our authorizations. And then on the first set we went out, we had just about 300 locations throughout Gauteng to collect. Um, I think it was about four and a half thousand shields around about there that we would then collect um, to make sure we can get them through to the first responders and the EMS guys. Subsequent to that, we figured out the second stumbling block was that we could not sanitize or clean the shields enough. So Oru put up six different locations throughout Hub 10 that would then collect um, and then clean and sanitize the shields and from their dispatch and through to the end users when they put that in. So um, Oru is also 30 years old. It's about 100 volunteers in Hub 10, a national organization of volunteers that try and do something this time. We've also wrote in Oru in Cape Town to assist with the Cape Town collections. So we will use our national footprint as volunteers to try and assist us with the project to protect the front line um, against the COVID virus. I can imagine the other provinces when they hear this are going to be, when are we next? And <laughs> that's definitely, we also want to give a shout out and a big thank you to Waltons. Uh, we contacted our Bidvest contacts there when uh, Brent and, and Kevin and the team were struggling to get the transparencies, which, by the way, come from China. And uh, they very quickly donated, I think it was a thousand of those. Yes, and a thousand, the, a thousand, a thousand rubber bands. The rubber bands okay. that they need. If anyone is within the space that knows and can source those kind of things, they desperately need the transparencies. Maybe. Um, also, if we can just talk to you again, Brent, tell us what you need. Anyone who's hearing this, how can they get involved and what are the different options? Thanks. Thanks so much, Debbie. I mean, we are a completely volunteer organization and we're a very strange volunteer organization because we're all spread out all over South Africa. We are connected via Discord, um, connected via WhatsApp, Zoom. Um, and I think as, as these times develop, I think we're all quite getting used to this, this form of, of communication. But um, at the moment, I think for, for us, um, as our, we, we have a new system that we will be launching in the, in the next couple of days, which we hope will, will go relatively viral. Um, and at, at the moment, um, a bit of the back end stuff, which is um, physically calling some of the people who have requested shields, just um, legitimizing numbers, that type of thing. That's certainly somewhere we could, we could, uh, we could require assistance. Someone that may be sitting in lockdown, maybe a bit bored, um, wants to do something good, good with their time. And we would love to hear from you in terms of just getting in contact with some of our, our requestees and perhaps helping us open up to, to other channels around, around South Africa as we are in Gauteng, Western Cape at the moment. And we're starting to sort of put roots down in KZN as well. So any help would, would be great there. Then from a, just a materials point of view, um, we have our shields. They require an A4 transparency as we were chatting about with Waltons earlier and a rubber band. So we literally need as many of these um, A4 transparencies and rubber pants as we can get our hands on. Our current target at the moment is to reach 20,000. We are sitting just under the 10,000, the 10,000 mark at the moment. We should have enough for the, the first 10,000, but for the second, there's, there's no way we're going to have to make a call to, to everyone to, to get involved. Then from a corporate point of view, um, if you do want to support our drive, um, basically we, we've asked people that are willing to sponsor any type of of funding donation is we will put you in touch with our suppliers who supply the material to print these items and you'll basically purchase uh, the material for us. Um, we don't take we don't take money or, or funds in any way and um, that's how we, we we get your donations. Okay. And donations could also be time, I can drive, I can I can do this, I can do that, those those types of things. So there's actually no limit to what what anyone can do at the moment. Right. That's administrative <laughs> time funding and and we appreciate the model that you put in place where people can go direct and, and purchase the materials and then distribute it to those who are printing that's right Brent, yeah. this is a phenomenal initiative it just shows you that in times what is it never waste a good crisis and that's i think it's churchill <laughs> just hope to how we can all work together to to support a need and not to only look to government to make it happen we'll definitely distribute this out to all our partners Guys, if you can do anything, it's a 3D PSA. Um, they will be launching a website. Hopefully, as soon as we launch this video at the bottom, you'll see the, the other website where you can go and log your time, your energy, whatever you want to contribute. And 
this is definitely a very, very practical response to flattening the curve. So see what you can do. And again, thanks so much. Thanks to Oru, who's in their spare time. Thank goodness they've got Thank a supply you. chain here to figure out the supply chain of this. And yeah, all the best and stay safe. Thank you so much.